Hello, we are live. Today is Sunday, September 4th, 2016, and we're having our fourth um, webinar on emergency preparedness. And I welcome Sean and Joanna who are with me. The message of today is that the disasters will not be total. The collapse, the global economic collapse will not be total. There will be islands and islands and pockets of different realities, islands and pockets and rivers of different realities mixing together. There will be still strong powers. There will be still happy people. There will be still opportunities. The communications would not completely go down. It will be very different from the disasters of the past, since there will be much more of higher energies. There will be much more of four-dimensional clouds, there will be more miracles, more help. And you will be the ones who are keeping it up. You will be the ones who keep up the higher dimensional property, higher dimensional Vibration. You still have time. You still have work to do. Working on yourself, upgrading yourself, building up your spiritual muscle, connecting to the greed. Developing telepathy, de developing empathy. Your path is outlined. You came here for a purpose, and now the purpose is more visible, more defined. There is more shine, more light on the other end. You still have. Tons of free choices, tons of free choices. Lessons to learn on the way. Understand this is an experiment and it's not the last experiment, not the first experiment, it's one of many. You came here not only to uplift the earth, you came here to see the flaws in the design of the experiment, the flaws in the design of the world, the flaws in the design of the matrix. You came here, you dived in, an avatar dived in, descendant, descending spirit, descending higher self, came down, you came down to see the flaws in the matrix, in the matrix, and see how it is, it needs to be fixed next time. That's the idea. You are the creators of the matrix. You are the engineers, the working bees, 
the great designers of the matrix and you come down here to experience it and that is the only way to experience by disconnecting that's how it came down partly largely disconnected and now you reconnect again to send their readouts up and that's what you do in your daily meditations the intention of your daily meditation is send the information up lift up the matrix and send information up so you dive into the reality get your vibration messed up you absorb the darkness absorb the distortions and then you meditate and send information up and that will help you build better matrices in the future better earths in the future earths planets civilizations genomes genomes how do you build a better human in the future <sighs> any questions all right so from my past um there were periods in history when things went up there were it's not the first period in the history when the magic was in the air when magical possibilities were in the air years past i would say 30 years were the magic was there but it was personal yeah the magic was there it was personal so you could deviate from the mainstream but that was so clearly pronounced mainstream where miracles were lacking little few few miracles very few too little but there were periods in the history when miracles were huge and they were mainstream miracles global miracles collective miracles I guess in America that would be the era of hippies, the era of hippies, when the whole matrix of social life was shifting. Suddenly things became possible. Suddenly things became turned upside down. Everyone was wearing long hair. That was the whole world went crazy, right? And it was positive. And musicians were the ones who made it actually musicians it was music who made this transformation what wasn't possible with logic political activity was made with music and even not the words of the songs the words of the songs were secondary it was the music of the songs which made it they made the change it was of course beatles and beyond it was rock and roll and beyond there was the music which sounded which was everywhere it was in the air it was shifting the minds it was shifting the matrix in russia it was the same time actually it was parallel it was the whole earth was shifting it's not only america in russia there was no absolutely no american music there was less than fraction of percent of american music and it was and, and that american music that came through was largely censored it wasn't a real one you couldn't hear even beatles there at certain point in 60s early 60s no it was all russian made but it was translated basically it was russified yeah russified Soviet fight, communist fight, communist fight. There is no word for that. Yeah, Russified. It was translated. 
So everything had to be homemade and made in Russia. So all culture had to be made in Russia, but the ones who made it, Russian musicians, Russian cinematographers, and all other sorts, artists, theater artists, actors, um, they were watching, they were allowed to watch the foreign foreign uh, movies, he listened to a foreign music, and then interpret, translate. So it was censored, selected, but it did change the world, even in Russia. So 60s, early 60s, I told the history of Stanislavski, and I cross it out. Stanislavski is another great man. A little early to hear it. Smoktonovsky. And Akintis Smoktonovsky was the single man who changed, single actor who changed the voice of the generation. He was the first one to make the wave. And talking about survival. So he had the talent of running away and hiding. <laughs> The person who changed the world had to survive first. So he grew up young, talented, elevated, romantic. And I think at the, at the time of the war, he was like 17 when the Second World War started, when Germans invaded. Um, everybody was drafted. He was drafted too. And he immediately germans were advancing like at the speed of 30 miles an hour like they were like really running on tanks forward not without stop so in a few days they just made it almost to moscow not well, maybe in a few weeks so lots of people ended up in their captured how do you call it military captured captives that is a word for that so he was captured and he was aware that you're not you will not be good if they take you to the german on the train he was aware he was smart enough to understand it, 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 he was smart but he was educated enough to understand and not everybody understood really so he he had to kill his guard maybe another 18 years old man uh, he did he doesn't tell how he did it but it was somewhere in the middle of nowhere in the village and it was i think in belarus basically lots of forests around so he ran into the forest and he almost died from hunger there because it's not very easy to survive in a forest even in in the summer so finally he ended up uh finding a house a little house with people living only fem only women because all men went to the war and they fed him and he recovered and then he went to um to fight against germans as a guerrilla squad of russian army basically the R russian army in the on german 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 occupied territory so he fought well and then the war ended and he knew they were smart enough again they were educated enough to understand that you if you have been captured before they see that the totalitarian system trace you and they will prosecute you so he had to run away again now from russians <laughs> and he did so in russia the easiest way to hide and he was ingenious in that is to go in the places where they would send you anyway but you wouldn't go there as persecuted but you go that as a free person a free uh, as a free person so he went all the way to north where they would send the prisoners and that is like a camp prisoners inside and service people outside basically the guards and other people who ran away and there he joined a local theater and surprise in the farthest part of the Russia, northest, northernest, beyond the polar circle. It's like 
whole summer is day and whole winter is night. I've been there. Um, in the theater, there were best talents of Russia because they also went ran away there during the war and ended up there. So he had best teachers in uh, artists in actors' art. And he, then he stayed there until the totalitarian regime basically ended. Stalin died, and there were clearly the spring in the air. And then he went to Moscow, to Moscow, yes, to Moscow. And as a talented actor, he was picked up soon by, by um, one of Bakhtanga, one of the best um, producers in, in, in the theater. And then and there, like I think it was 58 after five years after Stalin died. Uh, Smoktunovsky made that new voice. So before that, there was the voice of 50s, and you know the voice of 50s in America, it was pretty much the same in Russia. It was all over the, the, the world. And then it had to be transformed as, I don't know who did transformation in America. I think it was beatniks. I'm pretty sure it was beatniks. That's why Beatles were called Beatles after beatniks. So beatniks brought a new beat. And the beatnik in Russia was Smoktunovsky. He didn't behave like a beatnik, but he and he played it was Hamlet by Shakespeare, right? He played it with a new voice, which is intimate, basically, intimate voice. It would be the voice of Zakari yesterday. Intimate. Really, really intimate voice in theater, which was unthinkable before. There were a few others who did it, but he was the one who made the, that that um, a big event in the theatrical theater. So he, people were coming. It was fully sold. His um, performances were fully sold. And um, they picked it up. It went to the movies. It went everywhere. So it went from totalitarian to intimate to that's that's it so he did this huge change like what beatles did to the voice in uh, in america and some others did tell me who it was uh same thing was done by one person and basically he had to know when to run away and when not to run away and when to hide um that's a huge art and you don't have the information usually you you try to get it but it usually you have very little and now again we have very little there is so much on the surface that you don't really know what what's going to happen my understanding is that the decision has been made uh to proceed with a crisis and there was obviously the whole idea of the crisis coming in 2012 so we were preparing for that but by some reason it didn't happen I don't know why, but it didn't. Now it's four years later, and the crisis is still needed by um, to clear up the economy. But I understand this time that it's it might be not as disastrous as you would, you would be thinking. It might be like a controlled crisis. So the main idea of the disastrous crisis is for the banks to close, wait until people <clears throat> realize that the money are lost rename the banks you know rename them and open again fresh with a new new possibly global or maybe local maybe it would be stepwise yeah they will close open close open crash close open as it was in russia the major bank went bust and uh, then smaller bank went, once went bust and at the end <clears throat> nobody had any money except you know a few and it started fresh and the money was de devalued so there are two two paths one is inflation <clears throat> where you just devalue all the money so everybody starts from from nothing or you you just replace you know do reform and and just 
decide to start with a, uh, start from scratch, which is about the same. But basically, the idea is that you have to rebuild the finances, and you know they're playing with all these scenarios, like <clears throat> how to rebuild them. And I don't want to go into detail because I don't understand the detail. I uh, I think that's sufficient. What that understanding is sufficient that they want just to wipe it out and start fresh, and they want it global. Everybody wants global. The aliens want advice to it to be global, and um, the cabal is you know wants it global. So the the globalization of finances is in everybody's interest. <coughs> well, pretty much global now, but finally global. Um, I need a breath, so I, I invite comments and questions. <coughs> All right. <clears throat> the comment is that there is no comments and questions. All right. Now, one of the questions I'm getting is why do we? dive into the negativity why don't we stay positive and ignore the idea of the crisis and i don't have an answer except answers from um, alien friends they say some things you can ignore and some things you shouldn't and this one is the one you shouldn't <laughs> that's simple answer yeah ignore things which you can ignore right like, like you know um i need an example um yeah if you cross the street you can ignore traffic if you follow the stoplight signs right you can don't pay attention to the cars you wait for the cross sign and cross the you know the, the, this little white man sign and cross the road on on well, you can, you can ignore the stoplight and just look at the traffic, but you can't ignore, you shouldn't ignore both, right? <laughs> Very simple, right? So some things are so important, you have to like really pay attention. You, you know, you can't pretend there is no traffic. I mean, <laughs> that's a good example. Yeah, you, you know, you can pretend that you, there is no traffic, you just cross the road whenever, but it's unlikely that, you know, especially in a busy city, <laughs> you will you will um, be able to ignore it for a while so so um same thing with um global events some some things are in this my in this matrix it's all illusionary right some things are more real it's all illusion but some things in illusion are more illusionary and some things are more real so when it is decided by the collective to proceed it's possible to ignore but it's then you become more disconnected from the reality so if you want to play this reality you probably want to pay attention now when it happens i don't know i just every september I expect it september is the year if you just look at the history of uh global collapses usually they happen in september because they, why because they are planned all of these collapses are planned um <clears throat> above and below they are planned and usually they happen on monday <laughs> why <clears throat> because there is two days in weekend for the forces to prepare you know they already know they plan 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 and so there is they close the banks they move things around like gold and stuff and then on monday they already prepared so oh gosh today is saturday yeah, the step one is to get as much cash as you can from your accounts if you have any cash in the accounts. And I forgot to do that. Oh, today is what? Sunday already. Ha ha. All right. Hopefully, this Monday, but nothing will happen. <laughs> yeah, I know I'm attracting. I'm attracting by my worry. I'm attracting the things. But when it is global, the desires of one person are not as significant. Um. I, I hope we will go through this exercise and then we will um, lift, lift, lift the mood up and we'll have this 
and we have this uplifting we do this uplifting habitually and we develop this muscle so when it really happens you will say oh yeah sure and you'll be ready basically there's a question despite thinking that a world crisis is something bad when i think this topic only get positive love and vibrations thanks john Um, so there were um, there were other bright times and yeah sixties and before that nine hundreds nineteen hundreds and nineteen hundreds there was also like the revolution was in the air and there was tons of positivity happened it was like world fair in chicago world fair in paris first one was in paris and in chicago i think and um, higher dimensional energies were there that's when tesla was dreaming of the future and he sensed a lot of things from 100 years ago for up ago 400 years forward 150 years forward um and we live in the same predicament yeah john lennon understood he said you know you think spring is coming and really just a glimpse of the spring the great things will happen when we're not here anymore that's what john lennon understood really like you know he did the transformation in the 60s he started one of the biggest first waves but he understood he wouldn't see the other waves and the other waves are still coming so they will be coming for next 150 years right but again one of the biggest waves is coming and be ready for it so when the good wave is coming when the positive things happen um there will be lots of opportunity to to create and to participate and even if you're uh, inca incapable to participate in person, participating spiritually and mentally is, could be sufficient, right? When you are plugged in into, into the matrix, when you're pl plugged in into the grid, you don't really have to do anything physically. You don't really have to be present there. Being present gives you experience, gives you hands-on participation, but just being plugged in is sufficient. So some of us are here just to be plugged in, for sure. Just to stay, you know, you can be a hermit, yeah, a hermit. And um, just uphold the vibration and do nothing than meditate. Or do nothing as, than washing dishes or do nothing than grow plants. And still you uphold the vibration because you're aware. So upholding this vibration is job number one, right? And as I said, uh, wonderful things were happening. Like in, uh, so I was maybe 19 and I was starting to work in the lab and uh, everything was fresh for me, right? Was it 19? So it was 89 minus 64. Yeah, pretty much. Something like that, so around 20s. All right. Um, 69 89 89 maybe so there was a uh, perestroika democracy free market all these ideas were around and we had the government system of funding of uh science and it was very hierarchical you know as it is actually now it's still very hierarchical it's less hierarchical here but in the past it was all planned 
in Russia, it was all centralized. So it's all federal. Everybody was a federal employee. <laughs> you can't imagine, right? Everybody is a federal employee. Everybody has a rank and you can only go within the structure through the ranks and um, Very few formal interviews were there. It was all just jumping between the cells in the ranking system through connections. And it's not as frequent. You know, people worked on one job for many, many, many years, not like, like here and now. Okay. Um, so our boss was... He's still alive. He's older than I, maybe 10 years only. So... He was advanced. Uh, his, he was from the family of advanced scientists who were allowed abroad. So he traveled abroad, studied abroad, worked abroad. So he, he had this understanding of um, irrationality of the system. He had an understanding how it works abroad. He had like, but he was, how do you say? Uh, uh, I don't want to say anything negative, but he was a negative guy. Oh, no, no, not negative. I would say a, um, predator, a predator guy. Yeah, he was a typical professional predator. You know, that's how you got it, got become a boss, right? You have to be a predator, like a fighter in, uh, American managers are third chakra. So he was not as strong third chakra, but strong enough to project his will and be strong leader of dictatorial type. But he said, let's let's play democracy, let's vote. So we have that funding and we can give, we can, you know, we have flexibility to give uh, bonuses. How about we start voting for the bonuses for people? Let's do democracy. And that was an amazing experiment. It just illustrated how flawed is the idea of democracy. <laughs> when people started voting, it clearly became clear that it's unfair what people decide collectively. Because if you are popular, people vote for you. If you're just a good worker, but nobody knows you, which is typical, like especially in science, you know, you're not supposed to go and you know present your program. We just do a good work and publish. But you know, people don't read each other's papers, so there is no people have no clue who who is a good worker, but they know who is popular. So populism was rewarded. So if you go around and say what people like, you get you become popular. So. Uh, it was a beautiful illustration how unfair was the public vote for uh, for you know <laughs> distributing bonuses so imagine now you know the idea of a collective a, a commune is is the idea of communism right commune it is around for the whole life of humanity right so people have to live together and and be nice to each other. <laughs> and um, um, best known communes are actually, the commune is where the relationship between people are not monetary, basically, within the commune. If people buy stuff within the commune, it's not commune anymore. So monastery is a best working example. So monasteries existed through the whole life of humanity. And typically they are very hierarchical. There is like usually one leader or a group of leadership of elders. And there people work and do everything and um, work and pray and serve others. Usually they have churches and, and people come there to pray. And that's the main business of the monastery. They don't only live for their own labor, they also provide spiritual religious services to their uh, others, to outsiders. So that's a very good business model and very good commune model. And it worked. It worked for 
the whole life of humanity monasteries do work so if you look for the principles how to build a commune the monastery would be one of them and then the second would be kibbutzes in israel is agricultural collective farms and you know i originally they started agriculture now they can do any sort of services many of them went into technology and production so the factories actually but again between the members the distribution of wealth is non non based not based on money so there are usually it's possible for isolate examples but imagine in the whole humanity to go into non-monetary exchanges it's not easy it's it, it wouldn't happen right away and um you know, I can see how some people are so used to go and grab more than they need. And some people are so used to fight. <laughs> we are so used to fight. Yeah. Even in, in, in our community. I, I value fighters, right? You can see on the street in groups you can see people who are always in emergency mode always in an emergency mode they're so used to be in the emergency mode that they are locked in it and you can see them by the idea of being locked their position is locked their Reaction is locked. I'm I'm frequently in emergency mode, but I practice getting out of it. I do practice, and I'm pretty good in getting out of it. So I'm I'm good in jumping to emergency mode and getting out of it. So talking about this brings me to the emergency mode, and it's like two motors working against each other. One is how oh, we're talking about emergency; you have to go into emergency mode, and second is relax 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 get out of the emergency mode your best when you're not in emergency mode so so go in, it's like breathing go into and out understand when you go into emergency mode you lock so many block so many energy flows like typically like you can say all humans are so damaged because we are trained to get into emergency mode it's like stress work environment sometimes on job situation you are chosen for the ability to be in the emergency mode you have to like a soldiers to be like super fast answering answering super quickly think super quickly and always keep track of things around you know that's required yeah like fight and flight response stress so breathing is one of the first tools to getting out of the emergency mode meditation like yesterday the webinar with zachariah was so elevating so exciting i was so happy the whole day i was so high i couldn't, couldn't meditate i go into meditation and i'm so awake so excited hmm. so so it took me maybe whole 15 minutes of meditation just to get back to oh, relaxed and get on the other side another 15 minutes but i was able to i was able to and some days I, i'm not so cutting down on coffee and you really need to get out you need to get back to relax relax be intimate be open be united with the outside because emergency mode you know your shield is closed your senses are high but your shield is closed so it's like shield is closed and senses are high something like that and when you relax your your inner core is your higher self and then you are one with the environment you you don't you unblock yourself basically you reunite with the, with the, with everything with everything with, with the one with the, with, with the creation 
tons of ways to uplift your stress and come back to a relaxed state. It's essential. Any more comments, questions? I want to switch the topic again. I mentioned inflation is one of the ways to equalize people's I don't know this word poorness make everybody poor equally not wealth but lack of wealth to equalize so if you just wipe everybody's account that's one of the ways and you can start fresh with the new systems i don't think they have the new systems you really have you know people in economy and politics you know some bright people especially the ones on outside of the system who are thinking of freely they have the idea what what needs to be done and tons needs to be done legally and so on but again who is deciding um but um um private property like in america there is lots of you know every bit of land is private property right some are federal property some is state property some is private property you can't really get out of the car and uh, walk in the forest for any reason right usually in canada you can you know just cross the border and there just perception of private property is different in canada you can easily wander around um, and safely some of that is government some of it is private but they're not as paranoid and similar i would say in europe is pretty similar it's only very dense there is so then much denser population in many places and in russia it's all federal so people just have no idea that you can step on somebody else's property there is a fence but even fences are you know private and federal so you can easily jump over the federal fence and usually it's okay and there is tons of holes in the fences so you just go through the holes so neither of those federal property purse private property or you know in between neither of those is functional because most of the land is empty anyway like well, there's lots of unused land and and land which is not taken care of which is okay but it's it's on the way of many things yeah talking about economy um employment unemployment is so ridiculous right why would people be unemployed right it makes no sense if you want to work why can't you just start working right uh, from for outsiders, it makes no sense how people can not allow other people to work. And it's the whole system which prohibits people from working, right? You know, I tried many times, like when I was unemployed, not a good expression, but when I was feeling, perceiving myself as unemployed, that's a better expression. When I was perceiving myself as unemployed, I tried to start many new businesses, like many tens of businesses I tried during my life um, and some businesses were obviously I had a good product or good service a very good service and I try to push it and I see how it's it's either in Russia or in America it just there are forces that prohibit you from getting your product to the customers um here in san diego I have tons of for some reason light workers are healers I, I i communicate with lots of healers and all of them every one of them wants to get their service whatever modality reiki massage other modalities to the customers and there is so many barriers on the way to that like some people need the service but they have to go they there is no way for the provider and their uh, customer to connect. So there is so many barriers on that. And usually these are guilds. In America, this would be guilds of providers. 
So like if you're a healer, that is like medical guild, guild, which prohibits outsiders who don't, don't have a medical degree from entering and providing the services. That is massage guild, ma acupuncture guild. Reiki is, is not limited, but beyond that, all other health services are very regulated and even more that you, you you have to pay an entry fee a big entry fee and big fee for just having the practice periodic fee like any doctor's office they pay tons of extra money beyond what the services they provided just for for being in the business i would say maybe 90 percent 90% of what they pay has nothing to do with their services, but only with being protected. Like they have to be part of the insurance network and uh, medical insurance and then liability. So these are main, main um, fees they pay. And these are huge, right? And it kind of goes without saying people know that. So when things um, become reformed, uh, one of the ways it was always done in Russia and I think in Europe also, and I think in America also, it was providing, I don't know how the word in English, but in Russia it was called coupons. So basically the city, usually it was the city or the federal government would give people a replacement of money. So you will have dollars which or rub rubles which are worth nothing. And you would have also coupons for specific, yeah, food stamps. Yeah, that would be called food. In Russian, it was called coupons, but here it's called food stamps. So most of the people would receive equal number of food stamps, fuel stamps, and other stuff. So when the money system stops working and to keep people equally poor, but above their starvation level, their government, the local government or federal government would give people food stamps and will push, centralizedly push some, some resources to, to keep people alive. <sighs> yep. Just, um, so again, I, I assume there will be controlled collapse. I don't know when, one of September, I would say. Possibly, like highly, high, more, more highly, more, more probable than usual, than, than average. Um, and lots of, um, it will be pockets and biggest, more uh, stronger pockets of, of wealth would be military, of course. They have like many, many years worth of resources. They keep fuel, they um, keep food and stuff like that. So the, they, they will be prepared. Not all of them, but many of them. And again, you know, different countries would be different, I would say. And as Pentium said, they will be broadcasts. They will uh, claim the power they will exercise the power they will do what they usually do you know military uh leadership military dictatorship um i would say in civilized countries they possibly would be more civilized right because uh, because of the culture in less civilized countries um it will be more like in the old times more, more like the dictatorship and um, I don't know how big would be the riots. It could be big in some areas. It could be small in other areas. I think the riots go after uh, the waves of energy, the riots. So, so you can see at some points the riots just go very strong, but there are waves of energy guiding them. So. Sometimes things happen which should cause a riot and there is no riots. And on other, on other 
there is no reason but um but the uh the, the riots happen so best example of that was the 1968 there is a wonderful book 19 called 1968 and uh, what happened was great illustration that riots happen for some supernatural reasons in countries which are isolated from each other in the same year there was a wave of riots a wave of free thinking so basically there was a wave of energy like as now we have the waves of four dimensional energy there was a wave of some sort of upgrading energy maybe four dimensional whatever you call it so people just started thinking freely and started getting out going out on the streets and demonstrating uh, most famous i think were riots in in Czecho czechoslovakia at that time in russia they were minimal but still there was something in 68 and uh, in Mexico, uh, in America, it was huge. It was huge riots. Um, very famous, very profound. Uh, basically, they shaped the future. They shaped the reality. They transformed the reality. Was Chicago Convention also at that time? Possibly. Um, I was four, and we weren't paying attention. So, but. You guys can Google easily. So the point is, the riots were independent in different countries. Um, sometimes they hear about each other, but sometimes they don't, didn't even hear because you know, in Russia it was all blocked. In, in other countries, all, all the communication was blocked. So it wasn't transfer of direct information. It was supernatural, super above, above cultural. So we'll see how it goes. Um, there are, rumors that the riots in Ukraine were engineered and they exercised their you know some kind of electromagnetic technology to induce the riots um, I have no clue to know but I'm, I know the technology is out there it's possible to regulate the waves up or down you can activate the crowd you can inhibit the crowd and you know make everybody feel bored and go home so i wouldn't be surprised that would happen that technology would be used to calm down riots if needed so with all the darkness around if it happens again i think it would happen in waves i was thinking it would happen at once and it will have global collapse and everybody everything would be stopped I'm getting answers through different channels that it's unlikely and it wouldn't last long. So I was thinking about economy going. So my estimate was that in five years, the economy will go down and stay down for five years. So that was an estimate. So 19, oh, 2021 to 2026, I was thinking that, you know, we have complete um, Stand still, no electricity, nothing at all. And the answer was from from uh, uh, higher sources. They say not not unlikely that unlikely that there will be pockets of normal life. Their their humans will rebuild, restructure things. The prices will change, the money will change, but it wouldn't be complete collapse of everything some cities will survive the whole city some cities are prepared and they have enough resources to even if the money go down they have enough resources to survive the crisis and keep going because the key you have to have water running you know and trash removed if you have water running trash removed everything else is other processes are slower you know people would adjust they can go migrate but if water goes down electricity goes down anymore then the big city becomes unlivable like in a few days um so there would be a big exodus from cities and um, it really depends where it is because some farms would protect themselves some farmers would shoot people 
trying to approach and other farmers would possibly house the people, right? So it really depends. Um, and an episode of that kind happened in, um, I think it was 1940 plus minus one year. Paris was occupied by Germans and uh, people, there was a huge exodus from Paris. People just walked by foot, ran on cars and other things. So it was a big um, humanitarian disaster. People who are who were used to civilized life just ended up in the heat, in the road, without water or food and uh, no support. And locals didn't help. I don't know, obviously some did help, but, but in general, people from the city were so separate from locals, they, they didn't get much support. So people were dying on the road or, yeah, dying. And their most, what's that word, unexpected thing was that people who stayed in Paris were fine. Because what happened, um, there was an undercover agreement between Germans and French. French allowed the Germans to, basically secretly gave up and allowed Germans to occupy the French. So the, the, the military, what's that word? Um, Defected, maybe defect. There is a word. So, the military kind of it was a hidden agreement to to defect the country, and Germans in exchange didn't destroy it. Basically, there was no fight. They just occupied the country, occupied Paris, and there was nothing, no no resistance. Maybe little pockets, but the main resistance wasn't there. The main military resistance wasn't there. There was after that there was guerrilla resistance, but it was different. So. Paris was just fine. Germans came there. There was no no destruction of the civil life. Uh, you know, they continued the, the economy. But the ones who fled Paris, fearing their the the fights and the the, the the their violence, they they were in big trouble. So again, you know, sometimes maybe you you don't want to to leave the city and see what happens, and. There is no way of knowing, right? Unless you know, unless you do your research, unless you are aware of things coming, and unless you have higher guidance. Um, there are tons of examples of higher guidance. From my personal life, our friend was working in the Twin Towers, you know, and she had a job. A friend of our friend, we actually met them only once. Uh, but he was working in the Twin Towers, and on the day before, and he had a fiance. On the day before of the destruction of Twin Towers, of terrorist attack, his fiance cooked something, and it made him violently sick, so he couldn't go to work. <laughs> and there were tons of examples like that. People just ended up not being there for obscure reasons. Um, and he survived and he made it here. <laughs> um, I, I'm sure, you know, there were like, there were tons more published, you know, some people were scheduled to be on Titanic and they weren't there. Some people were scheduled to fly on a flight which could crash and at some point they were um, were miraculously saved from that. So the, this angelic guidance is uh, is their full force. So if you are supposed to survive, you will survive. Um, as I mentioned, my understanding is that this terrible Second World War, the terrible it was, was divinely guided to by all forces, positive and negative forces. They were kind of agreed on the outcome. And the biggest outcome of the Second World War, and I think it is also in textbooks as well, it's, it's a public knowledge, is that two major totalitarian powers of the world annihilated each other. I sort of knew that answer, but I didn't accept it. Now I do. So... Obviously, if the balance wasn't kept, 
if either one or another was more victorious, then the whole history of the world would change. The fact that they, they, they both were devastated allowed America to went up, to go down, oh, went up, going, to, to raise, to rise, allowed America to rise. And with all the totalitarian, how they say, with all the dominant idea of America, it still is much more gentle and much more civilized that would be either one of them, right? Um, with all the distortions, it's still much more civilized. So thank, thank <laughs> God bless America. So uh, thanks, you know, the history went in a way that America is the biggest, uh, not biggest, what, more coherent representation of Atlantis, the better representation of Atlantis than the previous ones. So America is reincarnation of Atlantis and reincarnation of Atlanteans. And uh, Atlantis destroyed itself. And now uh, the Atlanteans, we the Atlanteans, replay the Atlantean scenario, hopefully, to prevent the destruction, some destruction of the world. And uh, this time we are divinely guided there is a plan that we will make it right so so we are facing another wave of possible self-destruction and uh, there is lots of hidden alien and, and angelic forces which are making sure we don't destruct destroy the world and how do they do this uh, they do it from through us. Uh, so that's one of the main um, messages I'm getting. That let me do the this, the talk. So the message is that, unfortunately, the decision is very strong. The aliens wouldn't come into open during that period. They would wait for us to go through the economic collapse and recovery. And they would wait for the world government to form and invite them. So. Unfortunately, we have to do it by ourselves. And they bring all sorts of excuses why they don't want to participate. But their main argument is that they don't want to intervene because they want it to look and feel like we are doing it ourselves. They will help in all possible ways, ways except personally showing up. They will... Basically, they are us. We are hybrids. We have alien past lives. We have alien connections. We are talking to them. So they will just continue doing the same. They will talk to us, guide us, but we are them, basically. They will work through, they will work through us. Um, we are now recruiting others, right? We are spreading the world, we invite others to volunteer to be alien voices, alien bodies, alien hands. So light workers, star seeds, wake up, connect into the grid, and uh, be the, the positive aliens on Earth, be the ones who do the work. But basically, their physical ones, four-dimensional ones, will we'll just wait until until we fix it so they will give us advice through channelers sometimes angels will do the help and they're constantly doing the help by manipulating the reality the matrix they're fixing things but um, basically with the divine help we are the ones who are doing the work in that game 
So we are the ones who uphold the grid. We are the ones who will form the future leadership, spiritual leadership, and um, um, formulate the system. It doesn't have to be hierarchical. It can be distributed leadership. It should be, in my opinion, be a distributed leadership, like like tribal elders, like tribal elders, not necessarily dictatorial, dictatorial, but other way around. Like in um, in European armies, there is usually a commanding leadership, command commanding officers, and there is also their spiritual leadership. Like there is always uh, like um, an officer and a spiritual advisor or something like that. In religious ones, it could be the the Christian advisor, but in uh, or whatever faith they are. But in uh, communist ones, it would be communist advisor who would be responsible for spiritual part of communism, right? <laughs> Which is like yeah, contradiction in terms, but really it was it was called political advisor. But basically, the ones who are connected to the ideas and spiritual side. So that is a possible future for the earth. We will have um, practical leadership and also spiritual leadership, like channelers. I don't see how channelers, actually I do see how channelers advise, I do see how channelers could advise the business leaders or whatever. Yeah, business leaders. Um, I see how a business leader can have consultation with spiritual advisors, like many do. Not great many, but some. Some advanced spiritual leaders or business leaders have spiritual advisors and channelers. So I think that would be maybe the The future, some of business leaders could use spiritual advice and some be some would be getting it directly, right? Right. So that's I guess would be the answer. Because otherwise I think we are doomed. If if our um if we don't get miracles into the system we can build a, a working system. I, I think it's it, it has all everything has been tried and it didn't work. Basically, the main flaw of their existing system is that huge opportunities for deception, right? Allah na Allah. Allah na hu na hu la hu na hu la na na hu ma na hu ma na hu ma na hu la na aya na hu ma na hu ma na hu ma aya la na. So, um, yeah, the huge opportunities for deception. It has been there forever. It's you can see it's it have you know even in ancient times deception was, I mean recorded ancient times deception was huge. Uh, Bible is full of deceptives. Uh, current life is full of deception. Deception is everywhere. You know, advertisement by definition is a deception, right? It shouldn't be, right? It should be just information. You know, I offer something, you need it. Here is information for you, but. But it is so messed up, right? So messed up. People are bombarded by deception, and that's why the the filter the filters are clogged. They can't get the information because of the excess of it. You can't get to the right information because of access to it. So that's why search engines are so good. You really like are more likely to find what you need than otherwise. If you were just passively waiting for the information to come the chances of you getting the right information are much lower if you go and search for it and do your homework and research you're more likely to find it 
and uh, it's always distorted like right now I'm looking for books to read and there is so much stuff which I don't want to read I don't want to listen it's something which is their own vibration and there are a few the few of the, them which I really love and how do I find more of the ones which I read? there should be some sort of a search engine which, which would uh, you would go to one book or movie and that would give you the movie of similar vibration and it's not the case like EMDB or Amazon or um, IMDB uh, a few other search engines where you can find similar books they give you nonsense like you love this book but next to it what is what well, they say it's very similar it's it's completely different right it's like this one I love and this one I hate so it would be nice to have it where it is more similar when you go to one and then you get to similar ones like recently I started uh, listening to poetry on YouTube just again it was given to me but basically I go after one poem and listen to it and next day there is another poem and another poem and they all seem to be well selected to my taste so if I like this one I would like so YouTube likeliness YouTube similarity is more similar than book similarity and movie similarity which is nice so I love it nice to be on YouTube any comments, questions? So the main problem the main problem you would meet in there uh, if and when the crisis will strike and it might be the mixture of economy political and um, ecological like earth earthquakes and economy shakes and uh, uh, little wars here and there I don't think they will allow big wars I'm pretty sure they wouldn't the American army would or maybe United Army I would say United American civilized army American and others none whatever Alliance American Alliance armies would still be the strongest and that would prevent the global big wars but will be local squabbles especially when first economy shakes that's how usually they fix it they kind of distract the attention of the global collective by starting a small war in the Middle East so if economy starts shaking the first expectation is that it will be shaken little by little and then there will be little little relatively small small wars on Middle East which would distract and release some of the violence I wouldn't say it is more like distracts from financial problems distract the people so the market won't crash as strong it usually when the war happens the dollar goes up which is completely evil but that's how that it works um so the main problem which you would face is depression so yeah and stay insane how would you stay sane stay positive in 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 the shakeups and that's art that's art when I talk about it you know I get back the 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 wave of fear and some of that is mine and some of that is you like when you listen to me you get me that fear I feel it I feel it after after you know when I see the when I finish my webinars I feel that wave of fear which comes just from watching me so um <clears throat> Yeah, so being strong and being connected to the divine, I guess. Meditate. Like some bad days, I you know, I go and meditate 
almost whole day intermittently like i would do a little work eat a little cook a little do a little stuff and then go back into meditation um you don't have to meditate by being still you can meditate doing some some errands doing some work so that's a possibility um connecting to people who uplift you so there is that special type of people who function best in the times of the crisis chamber um not chamberlain churchill is one of them uh, you know when the time when the time is peaceful he would create a crisis just to be in good in good functional state so some fighters are tuned in tuned up in a way that they are designed to work best during the fight i'm not that type if the crisis happens my capacity is exhausted like in minutes and then i'm in emergency stress mode but some people just can function only when they're in the stress mode some of my supervisors were that so they would uh, create a crisis just to to feel good they would create a fight just to feel good when it is fight they they they're too up uh, attunement yeah they're they're tuning is you know the nerve they have enough dopamine serotonin and all other chakras and energies and chemicals working perfectly so i don't know you have to know yourself some of you are good in the crisis mode some of you are not and i'm i'm best in uh creative mode and when i'm in peace and doing something positive that that's so so for me it would be like any creative projects so that's what i would do uh listening reading to records and uh, yeah reading books and uh, staying sane and creating writing diaries so creative work would be for me the uh the way to get back into the peace and get connected all right so staying connected with the divine is is amazing now uh going out and helping others is a great way to to get the energy flow going in, in, in when even when things are going crazy around working and helping others working is having positive creative function um that is of and frank yeah that is of Anne frank that's an example things go crazy around and you're still doing creative writing and and um, stay sane stay your highest at your highest excitement and most of you will make it so don't be that worried about death right just ignore it accept it accept it first and then ignore it accept the disaster and then ignore it learning to filter it out is is art but it's possible and finding the people who uplift you i had wonderful helpers some of them were some of some of them just gave me my single advice but that advice was invaluable and some of them i kept coming to them very frequently to keep me uplifted and again you know you come from a crazy world you are all scared all worked out all stressed and they you come into that vibration of peace and enlightenment I, it just happens yeah i wish there was like a movie of that kind um you you know in some movies you have that episode where you go fight you see the suffering and struggle and then you come somewhere to a monastery or to an apartment to a kitchen to a place there are so many examples just of peace it could be in the middle of disaster but there would be a a, a bubble of peace and you get into the bubble and you share what worries you they reflect on you and that you you come back into that peace you can do it by yourself but sometimes you need a helper and it helps to get a helper and sometimes in the time of the disaster people are thrown apart and also thrown together and it's amazing how like in the cold it's my in the cold and danger it's much safer to be together 
ah, there's lo lots of fairy tales, you, you know that. You know, now people live in a huge house by themselves. It's like, it's like complete craziness, right? You can meditate, but why do you need the whole house to meditate? You like need like that little room to meditate. Everything else is excessive. There is excess of food, excess of energy consumption, excess of everything, right? So in the time of the disaster, staying together in very close proximity is um, is more practical. And also uh, the vibration, keeping up the high vibration, so crowding around people like Jim, crowding around wise men who can uphold the vibration, it's actually happiness. It's love and happiness purified. And Jonah said, you have to think of the greater good and you will feel at peace there. Then the new reality is created by your new energy. Yes. Yes. So yeah, um, some people are grounded in the now. Some people are grounded in the past. Some people are grounded in principles. It's all valid. For me, it's um, I'm grounded in the future. I don't know how, but um, that's my design. I would always think of the future. I will always think of opportunities. Always think of the greater good for the for the future. So um, you can do that too. Whatever, whatever, how Krishna does says whatever goes gets you through the night. Whatever gets you through the night. So um, think of, of the future, think of possibilities, think how it can be reconstructed. Uh, one of the, again, it's a predator type of businessman, but very successful, uh, Craig Venter. I admire him for what he achieved. Um, his approach is to jump without knowing where where you will land. Like you would calculate that if I jump and work hard enough, by the time I land there, there will be a landing platform. So he did it many times in his life, and sometimes he landed in the wrong place. But but a few times he he made it couple times he made it really strong so he was the first to sequence a genome um, just by willpower solar plexus power and a um, second time he created uh, a synthetic genome for the bacteria and uh, may make it live so um, there is a major crisis now I have to have to wrap up but basically uh, the message the last message was when you get there you need something you ask for it whatever it is the and I meant the structure for the future when I ask for the structure of the future when the future happens you, you will get the structure it will be in your hands you will find it then if you want strongly you will find it and thank you very much for listening uh, I wish you happiness. I will wish you understanding your role. I wish you connection to the divine and talk to you soon again. Um, I intend to run this webinars on Sundays at 11. So join, join me. We'll have Saturday dinner and Sunday. So have a good day. I thank you the ones who stayed with me, first who watched me.